Designing a Microsoft 365 tenant begins with planning your on-premises infrastructure to support your new tenant. In this lesson, we will examine the key areas that an organization must plan for either move their Microsoft 365 service completely to the cloud or to have an hybrid environment. First step towards planning your identity and authentication solution for Microsoft is to examine modern authentication for your Office 365 applications. Modern authentication is a Microsoft solution based on Microsoft Authentication Library or known as MSAL. It applies the Open Authentication or OAuth standard when an application or client software tries to obtain access tokens from an authentication provider to access resources. Modern authentication enables sign-in features such as multi-factor authentication, SAML-based third-party identity providers with Office client applications, smart card authentication, and certificate-based authentications. By default, modern authentication is turned on by default for Exchange Online, SharePoint Online, Skype for Business, and uh, Office 365 or Office clients like Office 2016 or 2019 client applications. The next step is to evaluate multi-factor authentication for your Microsoft 365 deployment. MFA or multi-factor authentication is a method of authentication that requires the use of more than one verification method. By doing so, it adds a second layer of security to user sign-ins and transactions. MFA works by requiring any two or more of the following verification methods. A randomly generated passcode or a phone call or a phone SMS or using a smart card which can be a virtual or a physical or using a biometric device. The next step you need to make sure your identities are in order is to prepare for directory synchronization to manage identities. There are a couple of things to keep in mind when planning an implementation of directory synchronization, including directory preparation and the requirements and functionality of the Azure Active Directory. Directory preparation covers a quite a few areas, including attribute updates, auditing, planning, domain controller placement, etc. Planning requirements and functionality include determining the permissions that are required, planning for multi or forest directory scenarios, capacity planning, and two-way synchronization. To help ensure a smooth transition to Microsoft 365 by using synchronization, it's highly recommend that organizations prepare their Active Directory Forest first before they begin their Microsoft 365 Directory synchronization deployment. After preparing their environment for Directory synchronization, you need to plan for implementing Azure AD Connect pass-through authentication. Pass-through authentication or PTA provides a simple password validation for Azure AD authentication services. Pass-through uses a software agent running on one or more on-premises server to validate the users directly with your on-premises Active Directory. With pass-through authentication, it enables users to sign in to both on-prem and Microsoft 365 resources and applications using their on-premises account and password. This configuration validates users' password directly against your on-prem Active Directory without sending password hashes to Microsoft 365. When planning for Azure AD pass-through authentication, you should keep in mind the following consideration. The key benefits, the feature highlights what it provides, supported scenarios and unsupported scenarios. Let's look at these one by one. So what are the key benefits of pass-through authentication? The key benefits include user benefits, administrator benefits, security benefits, and sign-in benefits. The user benefit includes users use the same password to sign into both on-prem and cloud applications. 
Administrative benefits include no need for complex on-prem deployments or network configuration because it uses a lightweight agent to be installed on-prem. That's about it. Security benefit include on-prem passwords are never stored in the cloud in any form. And sign-in benefit include extra agents can be installed on multiple on-prem server to provide high availability for sign-in request. So what are the feature highlights? Support for user sign-in into all web browser based application and into Microsoft Office client application that uses modern authentication. Another feature include sign-in username can be either the on-prem default username or another attribute configured in Azure AD Connect. And it works seamlessly with conditional access features like multi-factor authentication to help secure your users. Let's look into some of the supported scenarios. Users can sign in into all web browser based applications. Users sign into office application that support modern authentication. Users sign into office client using legacy protocol or Azure ready domain join for Windows 10 users and app passwords for multi-factor authentication. These are all the supported scenarios if you implement pass-through authentication. And let's examine some unsupported scenarios. So if you need requirement to access to calendar sharing and free busy information in exchange hybrid environment on Office 2010, then this is not supported and user sign into Skype for business client application without modern authentication it is not supported. Um, if you want to identify or detect the users with leak credentials, if you install pass-through authentication, that can all detect that. And if you want to use Azure AD Connect Health, pass-through authentication is not integrated with that. So these are all some of the unsupported scenarios. Like I mentioned before, if you are considering to use ADFS or Azure Active Directory Federation Services, it is going to be a complex and a costly deployment. So you need to understand the full requirement of you whether you should have an ADFS environment or not before deciding to go with this. To give you an idea, a federated authentication system can provide extra advanced authentication requirements. Examples are smart card based authentication or third party multi-factor authentication. Some of the benefits of ADFS include claim mapping. Claims are defined in terms of each partner appropriately maps in the ADFS trust policy for exchange between federation partners. Another one is centralized federated partner management. All federated partner management is performed using ADFS Microsoft Management Console Snap-in. Another one is web single sign-on. So ADFS provide web single sign-on to federated partners outside your organization, which enables their users to have an SSO experience when they access your organization's web-based applications. So if you have these sort of requirement, then go for ADFS. Another way you can deploy ADFS is possibility of deploying it in Microsoft Azure. Windows Server Active Directory Federation services can be deployed on Azure virtual machines and the recommendations for an on-prem ADFS deployment apply equally to an ADFS deployment on Azure. However, because some of the recommendations such as load balancing and high availability require technologies beyond what ADFS offers, they must be provided by the underlying infrastructure. So if you are planning to deploy ADFS in Azure, some of the best recommendation would be to deploy Active Directory domain controllers for all user domain in the same network as ADFS servers. And deploy multiple ADFS nodes for high availability and load balancing. And deploy one or more web application proxy nodes for internet access. And never expose security token servers directly to the internet. 
and please make sure to restrict access from the web application proxy nodes to internal network resources. Because Azure doesn't provide a native full-featured firewall capability, other options must be used to restrict traffic. You could either use Azure Network ACLs, which is less costly and simpler initial configuration, but the disadvantage is another Network ACL configuration is required if any new virtual machines are added to the deployment. Or you could use a Barracuda NG firewall. But the disadvantage is increased cost and complexity of the initial setup. So you need to consider all of this if you are planning to go with ADFS in Azure. Other consideration you might have is to implement Azure AD single sign-on to simplify user access. Azure AD single sign-on automatically signs in users when they are on their corporate devices connected to their corporate network. When enabled, users don't need to type in their password to sign into their Azure AD. In fact, they usually don't even need to type in their usernames. This feature provides users with easy access to their organization's cloud-based applications without needing any extra on-premises components. And single sign-on can be combined with either password hash synchronization or pass-through authentication sign-in methods. That concludes this lesson. In the next lesson, we are going to learn about planning your supporting infrastructure for Microsoft 365. So I will see you on the next one. Until then, take care.